Hi there and welcome to my first speed build in The Sims 4. Um, today we are making a modern Cotswold cottage. So I found this photo on my Pinterest, I think about, honestly, like two years ago now, if not longer. Um, I haven't been able to find the photo since, but since getting cottage living and Discover University because they're both European based packs, I felt like I had the right content to try and record this. So this build is based in Brindenton Bay is where I've currently placed it, but I feel like it will work in Windenburg or potentially Hempford on Bagley. Um, the lot that this is placed on is in the top left hand corner because I don't know the lot names. So if you want this in your game, it will be on the gallery, you can go ahead and look at the lot in the top and then download it and place it where it should be from there so this build probably took me around three hours i want to say on off maybe um i did have a test run of it so built it beforehand just so i knew roughly what i was doing and then sat down press record and here we are um so this contains base game uh, Discovery University, Cottage Living, I do have um, City Living in my game as well, but I don't think I use City Living for this. And then custom content wise, I used the custom content by Hey Harry um, and Felixander, including their collabs from House of Harlex. And then apart from that, the other mods that I have in my game is the tool mod to the take object off lot by Twisted Nexi and Better Built By. Because no matter how many times I try to enter those cheat codes, for some reason my game doesn't like it, but the mod sorts that for me. So, um, this build, the front of the build is decorated. The back I really wanted to sort of just blend in with the landscape, so it's just quite a lot of greenery out there, um, a couple of trees, but if you did download this game and you wanted to change it, you could do that yourself. And then upstairs as well, it could be a two bed upstairs, but I left one bed uh, unfurnished and then put one bed in, so there's one for the sim ready to go. Uh, there is a part of the footage that I cut because I thought I was done without the front and then found more objects and debugs so carried on detailing that but um, you'll see that in the thumbnail or the screenshots at the end it's not that much, just a couple of fences and some greenery really um, I've just waffled on and I haven't really spoken about the build yet um, so I think this is like definitely more of a British type build which is why I went Cotswolds because of the like tan colour of the stone I presume that you'd find it in that area but I, d I just really like it I really like it it's like my ideal dream home I can imagine it in the middle of nowhere no neighbours don't have to worry about anything and you've got the massive wraparound window on the front and then when we go to the interior you'll see that I carried that through um, parallel opposite as well through the kitchen which I guess thought would be really nice if you're sat in this front bit here in the box actually becomes a dining room so it's got a long table there and I can just imagine being sat there and then having the views out the front and out the back it would be my idea of heaven um, I did try and mix up some of the windows in this so you'll see that I've got the Felix and the ones on the front I've got the little Discover University one there I've got the Georgian windows and then I've got a bigger Discover University window as well, just because I don't like the builds looking too flat. Um, so I try and mix and match just so it doesn't look lifeless and textureless and just 2D, basically. Um, this bit here, I thought I had messed up the front because it's not glitching, which when we go into the interior, you'll see that there is a bit of a lighting glitch. What I didn't realize in when I moved an object, it removed part of the wall. So I thought it was down to my reshade. So the reshade I'm using right now is the uh, Dove reshade, and then my screenshots are done in the Love Vogue reshade, which I will link down in the description if you want those as well. Um, but it's not, an object got deleted, it wasn't the reshade. So I think it's probably a couple of minutes into the interior. Um, I struggle with the sofas because of the lighting, but then I realise that it's the outside lighting, not the inside lighting, so I fix that. 
so if you just bear with that will be fixed <laughs> um so this was my first time really using the tool mod ever which bit of a learning curve i don't really know if I did a good job with it, I think I did. I did go around after and just double check that nothing was glitching and that um, there was no sort of big objects masking through walls or clipping through the floors or um, blocking players. So even though these are listed across the front because they're from the debug menu, your players can actually just walk over them. So even if they look like they're clipping onto the path, your sim should just be fine to be able to go ahead and walk over these. So these walls are from Cottage Living, I think, I, mean, I, I love them. There's so many places near me that have big stone walls like this, so it just, this build itself, although it might not be something that I find directly near me, the landscaping is something that I'm quite used to because it's quite common in the area that I live. The, the So this bit here becomes a planter. On the other side there's another planter as well, so I do go ahead and then terrain paint all of these as well. Um, I just think it makes the build look a little bit more realistic, just a little bit, but you'll go ahead and see that when I get round to it. Um, I did leave quite a lot of the tool mod in, just because it was my first time doing it, so I just wanted to show how I did everything. And if there's anyone out there that hasn't yet used the tool mod, um, if I can use it, you can use it. It's honestly, as soon as you get the hang of it a little bit, have a bit of a play around, you're kind of good to go. It isn't that difficult once you understand the concept of it being based on like a number axis. So what I did with this bit here is once I found a height that I liked, I just copied and pasted the value and then I could just go around and sync everything to the level that I wanted it basically. So I think we're kind of coming up to the bit here where I'm done with all of these walls. Um, I just wanted to, I know I could have just coloured the foundation, but I thought the texture and it being a bit more 3D using the walls just looked a bit better than colouring the foundation. So um, I do follow around on the right hand side like I have done here, putting the wall right up close to the foundation to cover it. Um, and then I use a lot of the debug greenery as well to kind of mask bits that might be clipping or sticking out or looking a bit weird. Um, but you'll see that shortly. So I think, yeah, this is a bit where I start now. So I go ahead and start putting in the greenery and using the tool mod to scale some stuff down. Um, my problem now is I found that I actually like the debug items more than I like the in-game greenery and nature so I kind of just go a little bit nuts and kind of just fill the whole thing with debug basically um, yeah that's kind of what I go ahead and do um, the back of this build as I've said which you'll see soon um, I do just kind of put quite a few trees down just because I really wanted it to blend in with the landscape around it. So on the gallery this might look a little bit weird because if you can see in the right hand corner I think that's meant to be the entrance to the lot but I flipped it around and put this bit at the front just because I preferred the lighting from this side to the other side. I don't know why I'm really funny about lighting in The Sims 4 even with the reshade so I'll like rotate a lot even if it's not meant to be rotated in that way just because I prefer the lighting. Oh, this tree, I fell in love when I put this tree in. I don't know why, as soon as I put the tree there, I just, I died a little bit inside, basically. Oh, it just, it, I think it just wraps around the build really nicely in that corner. Um, this is where I put the mother of all trees in. And I think as soon as I put that in and you sort of follow up, your eye follows up the roof line and then into that tree. I don't know why, but I love it. I just really love it. Um, the budget for this lot, if you're going to put this in your game, the limit does not exist. Um, when I build in The Sims, I go into Manage World, so I did this one, um, I'm going to be starting a save file, so this will be going into my save file, but I don't use budgets unless specifically I'm building like a starter home. 
which I don't really tend to do, just I find without custom content, because I've only got limited packs, um, I really struggle to make something that's detailed, basically. So this little bit here that I'm putting in now, I don't know why I did this, but I was building and then all of a sudden I was like, they need bins. So in the UK, this is kind of quite common, I'd say. You can get like these little bin sheds, so I go ahead and put this door in here and then shove the window back so I get the shutter and then I just cover it in a plan to hide it, which it sticks out a little bit, but I think it's right. And then I go ahead and pop um, a couple of bins into that bit there, which you see me doing now. I know there's a glitch on the floor. I did forget to cover that. But if you put this into your game, you could quite easily go into debug and then put some grass or something over it and you wouldn't be able to see it anyway. But I just thought that it, it, for it to be a little bit more realistic, I just thought it looked really nice. Um, I did go ahead and put grass from debug and everything kind of more to the front of the lot. As you can see on the side, it's kind of overlapping, which when I put this onto the lot in the game, because it blends on the grass around the outside, I kind of wanted it to look... A little bit more seamless so I did go ahead and kind of push stuff up to the edge of the lot just so when you put this in your game or when it's in the game like right now it kind of looks like it's extending and I just think it blends in a little bit better with um, the world around it basically um, so putting in some vines some greenery I did um, trial the wisteria from cottage living but for this build i think this um ivy is from discover university and i just like the texture of it all and i think it goes with the color palette a little bit better so i just stuck with this and then pop this around the build basically um where are we up to now what are we doing i think that's it on the exterior Yes, so we're on to the interior now. I do go ahead, you can kind of see now in the corner out the front, um, I did go ahead and put fencing in around the front of the lot as well, which is the is kind of like the wooden base game fencing, I'm pretty sure it is. So I thought that that kind of just backed on nicely. So I did that. So you'll see that if you download it or if you save to the screenshots in the end, you'll be able to see that as well. Um, this interior, I did struggle bit with this interior i didn't really want to like clutter it too much so you'll see me going ahead here and this is actually the dining room so it's very much my kind of style i quite like um muted colors wood tones all of that so i go ahead and put this in here and then i really liked the shape of these stools against like the straight edge of the glass and the table as well like the little rounded thing i think it softens it so we go ahead and use them, and then you'll see me struggle for a light. I don't know why, even on the short height, I felt like it blocked the view too much out the front. So I'm pretty sure I don't actually put a light in above this table. But I just wanted it, so if you're playing here and you've got your sims out there, you've got the wraparound view, I didn't really want to obstruct it too much. But I do come back towards the end and add a couple bits of clutter to um, that dining table. So I was thinking of this little bit here more as like an entertaining space. So I've popped a bar in there. So this, um, all of this CC now, this is by Harry. So that's the kitchen bar. And then this here is the um, Jardin pack, I think it is. So it's the Jardin counters. I didn't want like big block counters because I felt from the outside looking through, if it's just like, up against the window and blocked it might look a bit weird so i use those open ones which you can clutter but um i tried to keep this more simple i really wanted the landscape to kind of be the main focus of the build rather than like cluttering it up um around about now i think i realized that the lighting was a bit weird but we do go ahead and fix that as soon as i get to the living room um so this bit here's the window that i said that ran parallel so in this corner here i just tuck in um a little kitchen uh, i used more wood tones as well and i kind of went for a lighter one i like mixing 
the dark and the light so i go ahead um these are the that's the kitchen fridge um from harry and then i believe that's the country cabinets i think and then that's the kitchen fridge and then i go ahead and use her halcyon her island in this one as well um i saw this trick i can't remember where i saw it but it's using the original floors so you just recolor the original floors and then if you press Control f it um activates quarter tile placement so it'll turn it into these triangles that you can see on the screen and then you can kind of make your own pattern i did that with this because i think it really contrasts well with the wood because you've got the the white and the black and then i go ahead and use black bar stools and then those shelves are like a really really dark gray so they're kind of like an off black um which i thought went really nice with the kitchen so i don't clutter too much with this kitchen once again like i did with the dining room and as i do with the living room um i like to keep it not minimal but just not super duper cluttered um i did leave that corner counter free which i didn't realize until after so i hope that that still works as a um usable workspace if your sim cooks which i will play a test so if you see it like that in the gallery it does work so there we are um here we are cluttering we had a, i had a couple of bits of shelves um basically just harry's kitchen clutter nothing crazy really but i wanted it to look lived in but not messy so i go ahead and do that uh we will move on to the living room in a second and that backs onto behind this which i go for a little bit of a darker sort of color scheme and add some curtains just to the window on the right hand side now just to soften that down as well which you will see shortly um add a plant on the shelf because everybody loves a plant if you see that i kind of throughout this whole thing i'm just scrolling through the menu so often it's because i used to have so much custom content in my game that i didn't actually know what i had in total so i do find it easier now with more limited cc and using just the packs as well to be able to kind of see what i've got um i did struggle i feel like all i've done is struggle with this interior um i did struggle with the flooring in here because the glitch with the lighting is it's the outside lighting not the inside lighting so as i was building i didn't realize but what i must have done is removed a wall somewhere um i do pick that back up because i add in the orchanic light beam trim that goes with the columns because my thought was if this was an older farmhouse when it was renovated it would still have the original beams and stuff i presume it would have been listed um so i put those in which divides it up into rooms um and then realize that the lighting is wrong because i have these in my other game and i'm changing the reshade to see if it was that because it's not the original color that it should be and this is where i figure out that the lighting is wrong but um i, d I do sort that out. i end up going with dark sofas in these living rooms and then i mix in wood tones surprise surprise um as the accent chair and a side table and then i put the fireplace off to the right because i did still really want a fireplace in this build and i actually quite like how it's offset which i've not really done before but i do like it and then i pop some candles in the fireplace just to try and cover the lip at the bottom and also you know everyone has their like quirks it's kind of high candles in a fireplace can't go wrong really <clears throat> Um, and then to the right of this bit here, which we'll get to at some point, um, I have another seating area there and then an entryway, which if you download this, please feel free to change anything. I kind of get a bit stuck with the transitional areas, but um, I do end up liking what I put in that corner. It's more of like a vintage revival style, so it's got a bit of industrial, a bit of like older artwork, um, and it's more of a kind of enclosed sort of private seating area i imagine like you go and read a book or something there really whereas like this space and the dining room and everything would be more for entertaining but honestly if i could have this house i don't know what i'd do i really don't know what i'd do it's my ideal dream at home this place uh here i am i think i'm putting in the curtains now so i go for like a warmer brown tone as well just to soften everything down and then warm it up um 
subconsciously because I didn't realise the lighting was wrong because it's quite blue toned. I tried to use a lot of warmer colours just to warm it up and then when I fix the lighting I still think it looks nice so we keep that as well. Um, I go ahead and add these pillows in for a bit of texture. I like to make it look a little bit more lived in. So that's what we're doing here. We go ahead and pop this in now. And I can't really remember what I was doing at this bit. Oh, I know what I was doing after this. I find um, these dividers from Harry Spoon's kit, which I put there because my thinking is I don't want to block light coming through to that. So with it having the slats in it, it would still let the light through, which I don't think Sims lighting works like that. But um, I did it anyway because I think it looks nice. So a little bit of clutter on this coffee table here, nothing crazy, just a book and a candle. And then I go ahead now, once I put this lampshade in, which is my favourite lampshade ever by uh, Felix. I think it's out of his shop look. I think, or it might be out of his Grove one, either or, I can't remember. But here I am putting in these timber beams, um, which you'll see in just a second. There we are, inside lighting, and it was that bit there that was broken. So I go ahead and fix that, which I think it I think it looks a lot better with these support beams in place. Um, so we're starting now on this downstairs area. I do get rid of the side table that I put in. I did think it was going to work, but I didn't think it was quite right. So I switch it out for more of an industrial one. And then I use the tool mob to downsize this painting here so I can pop it on the wall, which I actually really like that. So God bless the tool mod, basically. If you haven't got it, go and download it. It will change your life. Same as Better Build Buy. If you haven't got that, it unlocks so many more items that are already in your game that you wouldn't have access to. And it's like having a brand new pack, basically. And you can add so much more detail into your game by using it. So I changed the floors here for a lighter one. Not a lighter one, it's a darker one even, but it's um, a bit warmer. And then I add in this stone here to kind of mimic the original stone walls that would have been in the building from the exterior one so i've popped those in as well and then i get started here on the seating area um quite simple this one so just pop a plant on there and then a little bit of clutter and then once again these curtains to kind of soften the area down and i can't remember if i change the swatch of those chairs i think i keep it like that but um, once again, using one of Harry's rugs, which I love this rug so much. Her textures are just phenomenal. Same with Felix. They just, they make it look really 3D, but still max this, which I utterly adore. I oh, clearly didn't like those chairs. Clearly wanted the sofa instead, which actually in the long run, I'm quite glad that we've got the sofa there. So here becomes a little entryway when you walk in. Um, big mirror, I put in a seating bench in here as well. I wanted to make this bit sort of a little bit more traditional before you enter the rest of the property that's modern and I mimic the same flooring that I put in the kitchen just because I like the contrast of it with the um, the wood basically. But I do put a big round rug just to kind of soften it a little bit that's in a more warm cream sort of like tan colour as well just to make it a little bit more, I don't really, not home like but I think that kind of adds into the rest of the colour palette. I think that's a little bit more traditional than just the flooring on its own. So I put these beams in at the top now, just to mimic in with those. Coat rack over there, and then a chair that I imagine like if you're getting ready to go out, you can sit there and put your shoes on. And that's kind of about it for that little entryway. So we move on to this bathroom, which bathrooms aren't my strong suit. I, I like this bathroom in the end, but it's not my favourite that I've ever done. So I go ahead and block off that bit to the right, which actually is the chimney breast from the outside. Um, so I block that off because I can't really imagine that anyone would... I mean, I know people do hollow them out, but I thought that this shape kind of just worked a bit better for the bathroom. And I go ahead and use one of Harry's mirrors that I've not used yet. And I really like the sort of mercury glass texture that you get on that. So this entire bathroom is basically just Harry CC. Which is basically, this whole build should just be sponsored by Harry and Felix, basically. It's just all their CC everywhere. But I do, I do like the overall outcome um, of this bathroom. Let's go ahead and pop a plant in the corner there. Um, I put a bench in here as well, like a seating bench. So if you're like going to use the bath or whatever, you can put your clothes or anything on there. Um, and it's quite calm, this bathroom, I think, like the colours and everything. It's just a little bit more muted. Which, if you're going in for like a relaxing bath or whatever, I think is probably the vibe that you're going to want. But I still do use a little bit of the black on that bathtub as well. 
So moving on to the upstairs now, the room on the left I leave unfinished. So you could make that into a kids room or a guest room or you could even make it into a home office. Um, but I leave that one unfinished and I kind of mimic the seating area from downstairs up here and I put a magazine rack which acts as a bookcase as well. So you are able to like read a book and your sims can use the books and then in this bedroom as well. It is quite simple this bedroom. Um, I do like how it comes out but obviously if you move a sim in you can customise it however you want. Uh, and I do put a TV in here as well so you do have access to a TV and then before I finish this downstairs we put in a tablet so you've got access to the computer as well so you can use that one. Uh, very much the same colour palettes downstairs, love this bed from the country collection I believe that is and then these side tables are to die for, I want one of these in real life but they would set you back a pretty penny. I do believe. So there's the cabinet from downstairs which I put in up here which I think really suits the theme upstairs. So that's the bedroom done. Um, really simple and then I kind of just mimic the same as downstairs up here. Oh uh, yeah, I mean if you wanted to, if you had a spa day or something you could turn that into a little spa moment. You could put some yoga mats down, uh, turn it into a gym, but I just use it as a little seating area. I mean if you really wanted to you could turn it into a bathroom even. But that is pretty much that on this build. Um, I did block the stairs off like this. If obviously you'd leave it open if you want access to the other room, which I mean you could make into an ensuite, even it'd be a huge ensuite, but you could. Um, but otherwise, I would have removed that bit of flooring there, but my game was glitching, so I couldn't. So here I am, just finishing off the dining room. I pop the the tablet in there. I plan. I go to put some food on, but it looks a little bit cluttered, so I just switch that out for a simple tray with a candle, which you'll see in a second. And that is that onto the screenshots. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this build. Um, I will be doing some more in the future, but in the meantime, uh, thank you for watching if you've watched through, and I will speak to you soon.